Hey guys, Nick here again. Welcome to another video on Google Shopping. So this is probably going to be the most important video I've released so far. It's really about making sure any campaign you set up, whether it's your test campaign, scaling campaigns, or, or anything, any campaign you're launching with Google Shopping, how to make sure you're optimizing that and making sure that you are keeping Google happy and they're rewarding you with great cost per clicks that you're giving yourself the best possible chance to succeed with Google Shopping. So this is very important, guys. Do not skip this video. Watch it till the end. There's really, really important information here that no one's discussing. It is uh, on the higher end of stuff, like it is more technical, but if you do this, you are gonna do much, much better than everyone else in Google Shopping, and that's big brands included. Let's get into it. So what can you do to make sure everything's running optimally? So it really boils down to two things, guys. So you can make changes within Google Merchant Center and Google Ads, so those two platforms within Google. Uh, and that includes things like fixing your Merchant Center errors and making changes within you know, your campaigns. So the next level of tweaks you can make are at the store level. So this includes things like images, titles, descriptions, and changes within the Google Shopping app that I mentioned in other videos. So as you can see, this is where our discussion is going to center. And I'm going to go through all of this in much greater detail. This here is how you're going to make sure that you beat uh, the bigger guys. And this is how you are going to be far more profitable than the average person that engages or gets involved with Google Shopping. This here is going to separate people that succeed and people that don't succeed. Okay, so Google Merchant Center and Google Ad Tweaks. So firstly, the Google Merchant Center Tweaks. So your Merchant Center feed is absolutely everything. So you need to make sure you're always maintaining and ensuring this is running at its optimal, the most optimal level that you possibly can. So any of those red or orange error messages getting in there that you're getting, that you're seeing within your feed, so these ones here, especially the red, but also the orange, fix those up. So if you don't know how to fix them up, Google it, it'll come up within uh, Google's uh, forums. And if you don't find it there, chuck it in YouTube or whatever, or what you can do is contact the Simprosis app developers and they're fantastic. They've helped me with heaps of quirky little issues that I've had and they've gotten back to me super, super quickly. So I want you to make sure you're regularly going in there and checking that all your products are approved, there's no issues, fix these up because if you do have issues, it's gonna affect the quality of the feed and the feed, as I've just said, is absolutely everything. This is how Google is basically able to determine whether or not your products are gonna be shown. So it looks at this, it looks at your site, together with your Google Ads platform, they're all speaking together, and the combination between those is what make the, makes this work. So if your feed isn't good, your result isn't gonna be good. So make sure you're maintaining that and keeping it running perfect and in tip-top shape. Okay guys, so next bit is negative keywords. So negative keywords are where you're wanting to remove an unprofitable product. I'm gonna get into the requirements of that in a second, but you're basically wanting to add any irrelevant terms that come up and trigger your ads. So eventually you're gonna build a nice little list based on your store and what you're selling, especially if you have a niche store, but some really common ones unlikely to yield results are Amazon, Walmart, Best Buy, where to buy, reviews. Things like this are unlikely to lead to sales. People are looking for something specific, and if you're not providing that, then you're gonna get penalized and it's not gonna be relevant and it's never it's not gonna to lead to a sale. So as I get into this, make sure you're setting cal calendar reminders to look at the search terms that are triggering and then adding things to the negative keywords. So you can check this within your Google dashboard, your Google Ads dashboard and your shopping campaign. So when to remove these, it really comes down to your budget um, and how relevant the keyword is. So you're gonna to wanna to spend a bit more money on something that's more relevant or further down the funnel, so something a bit more specific. Um, and then for broader search terms, you're probably gonna be a bit more brutal and remove them earlier. So if you've got a small budget, I'd remove keywords after five to $10 spent. So that's around, if you've got around $500 to spend on a campaign, remove after five to $10. Not ideal because you're not giving Google the data it needs to optimize and you're not actually getting enough data to know whether or not the product is a success, but be brutal if you have a small budget. For larger budgets, so 500 plus uh, to maybe 2,000, go 10 to $20. And then if you have more than $2,000 to spend on a campaign, uh, spend more than $20. So on top of this, make sure you do all the store level tweaks. Uh, that's gonna really improve your chance of success. So removing unprofitable products. 
So this is going within your product tab and removing these products, okay? So anything where you're burning money and you're clearly not even getting add to cart sales, make sure you also check the bounce rate. I haven't got that on here, but check your bounce rate. If you have a super high bounce rate, then something's wrong. So you need to work out, is your page loading too slowly? Um, is there other tweaks you can make to improve it? Like, can you get better images, things like that? Although it depends on your budget, stick to this set of rules and it's a good little guideline for you um, to have something to go off. Not a hard and fast thing, but stick to it and let's see how you go. So small budget, as I said, under 500. Select a low figure like 10 or $20 spent on a product. Uh, keeping in mind that obviously you're limiting the amount of data you're collecting and it's not going to be perfect, but to conserve your spend, just keep it to that and move on. Remove the product entirely, filter your campaign and exclude that product. So medium budget, aim for one times the revenue the product brings in to really give Google a bit more time to optimize. Again, not perfect because if you have a $40 product and you've spent $40 on the product, if you have a dollar per click, that's only 40 clicks. So still not perfect. Ideally, you want to get, and obviously this isn't going to be everyone. No one, not everyone has the budget for this, but you want a couple of hundred clicks. You want, you know, 200 clicks, 300 clicks to really know whether something has got legs. So prior to all this, if you do want to let it run a bit more, check your bounce rate, check your load speed, check that you can make all the other improvements that I mentioned in the next few sections to the actual store. And I'm sure that if you do this, it's gonna dramatically improve the performance of your campaigns. So store level optimization. So the most important things when it comes to your product feed are accuracy, relevance, and accuracy and relevance in relation to what people are searching for. So there needs to be this connection between your product and what people are searching for. And it need, you need to make sure that you're giving users of Google a really, really good experience. Google's gonna reward you if you do this. And the most relevant merchants with the highest quality feeds are gonna get lower cost per clicks and in turn, lower cost per conversions. So if you tick all their boxes and you give people a good user experience, remember it's all about what people are searching on Google. People are going in there with a particular question and the person that puts what they're searching for in front of them at the right time is going to be not only rewarded by Google, but obviously increase your chance of getting a sale. So moving on to the next bit. So the first step is having high quality images. So the image needs to be eye catching. It needs to accurately represent the product that you're selling. I also suggest you have 800 by 800 pixels, although the requirement is much smaller and also having a clean white background, no logos. This is really gonna help improve your CTR percent, so your click-through percent. So what that means is the number of clicks divided by the impressions that you get is gonna give you your click-through rate percent. So as you can see, we've got two of the same product here, but dramatically, dramatically different listings. So as you can see here, look at this horrible picture. Who in their right mind is gonna click it? Even if it is £2.49, these ones here are gonna get bought by most people every day of the week. Yeah, you might get the odd person interested, clicks through, but with an image like that, the click-through rate isn't gonna be great. You don't know what you're buying. It could be, it, it just looks like little golden turds. You can't really see what it is. Where these here presented really nicely, uh, you can definitely charge a premium. And that's what I talk about in my other videos. When you say to me that products are oversaturated, that you can't find anything to be competitive on, go through and have a look at the things that have really bad images and see if you can improve them. So this here is a perfect example of that. Get a high quality image and it's really gonna help improve your click-through rate and the performance of your campaigns. So next is the product title. This is so important. It's arguably the most important change you can make to your shopping campaign. And I actually, I just read through a case study where they found enhancing product titles resulted in 151% more clicks, 47% uh, increase in their CTR and a 28% reduction in their CPC. And this was a, a really, really big um, agency that runs Google shopping campaigns. And this is what they found through heavy, heavy testing, making sure their product titles were optimized as I'm gonna show you now resulted in these amazingly improved results. So it's so important that you get this right and I'm gonna show you how right now. So here are the key requirements for a product title. It needs to be accurate and relevant. 
So make sure you're using relevant keywords that's gonna give the person searching what they want and a great experience. So what I mean by that is if they come through and they see your product and it's and they bounce because it's not as represented, um, you made it out to be something it wasn't, Google's not gonna like that. You're gonna get penalized and it's not gonna help your cause. Next is follow the Google requirements and best practice for your products category. So I uploaded recently a little infographic and that's a perfect little thing that shows you what you should use for different product categories. So if you're interested, the link to my group's gonna be below. Make sure you come in and join. You'll see that infographic. I'll put it in the learning modules and you'll be able to see it together with this. And Google's requirements are you're not using excessive amounts of capitals, exclamation marks, promotional text like free shipping, uh, percent off, things like that. They don't want that in the title. That's not relevant to what someone is searching and Google's gonna penalize you if you do that. You may even get your account, your Merchant Center account, uh, disabled, banned temporarily or whatnot, but it's not good, don't do it. So the next thing is think and talk in the shopper's language. What are they wanting when they're searching for that specific product? Put yourself in their shoes. What would you search? If you're searching for Nike running shoes and just an ordinary pair of running shoes come up, you're not gonna wanna click through to it. As I said earlier, make sure you're checking your search terms that are triggering your ads. Go in and have a look and then include those that are coming up frequently in your product title if you haven't got them already. So after that, make sure you're placing the most important information at the start of the title. So Google ranks it and reads left to right and it's gonna prioritize in that way. Also, remember, although you can have 150 characters in the description, it's gonna get cut off at 70 quite frequently. So those first 70 characters uh, left to right, you need to make sure that they are 100% what the user is gonna to wanna to see when they're searching for your product. So following on from product titles, obviously your product descriptions are also very important. So Google is gonna crawl your website and it's gonna go through your product description as well. So again, you're gonna want it to be accurate and what's in there must be a true reflection of the images and the title and what the, and must match, so be relevant to what the person has searched for. So throughout it, make sure you're speaking in that customer's language, know their lingo, know any phrases, terms that help that help those people know that this is the product that they want. Remember, that's the issue with online shopping. People can't touch and feel it. So you need to immerse them. You need to have videos, images, product descriptions and titles that really, really tell this person this is what they want, lowering that risk and that barrier to entry for them over them going and buying to a traditional brick and mortar store and getting the product there and then. If you're doing all these, you're maximizing the chance of the user getting a good experience and resulting in a sale. Google knows based on where the person is, if they're connected to Wi-Fi, where they are, how long they're logged in, where they're logged in. They know all those things and that's how they come up with when to show your ad. So if you've got all these things right, they're gonna show your ads when they're most likely to convert for whatever you're optimizing for, obviously for the most part for us, sales. So lastly, keep your descriptions 500 to 1,000 words. You're allowed a lot more, but this and keeping it to a max of a thousand words is going to be perfect. So, especially for higher ticket item, ticket items, go to more towards that one thousand. For lower ticket, go closer to the five hundred. This is for the most part what you're going to need. This is the bulk. Another really good thing you can do is within your Google Shopping feed, make sure you're going in and as I've shown you, add in the relevant category so Google knows when to show your ad based on the person and their search history and what they're looking for, what they've searched. The more specific you are, the more likely Google is gonna show your ad to the person that's likely to buy. So get real nitty gritty and make sure you're using the most relevant thing you can find within that list. So Google has their own obviously taxonomy of categories. It can be found within that app. If you need any more definitions, head on over to Google. They've got a definitions page on this. Go have a look through it and it should help you. Okay, so that's it for now, guys. I hope you've found some real use in this. This is gonna be really important. If you implement this, you are gonna do a lot better than your competitors or other people doing Google Shopping, even bigger companies. Some of those, I've worked for some really big companies, they don't go to this level of detail. They struggle and their campaigns are not as profitable as they could be. If you do this, you're gonna increase your profitability, you're gonna increase your chance of doing well with Google Shopping. So make sure you're removing unprofitable keywords, adding them to your negative keywords list, removing those products, getting the feed tidy, doing all these things in here and on your store, so the titles, descriptions, 
and you're gonna see yourself getting much, much better results. This is where most people fail with Google Shopping. This right here, effective feed management. This is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more, but these are the most important things. So guys, leave a comment below if you have any questions. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. Show me some love with a like, and I will see you soon. Thanks, guys.